Yeah, there were some terrible years. I literally, I pushed the line in the street and turn around and homeless people would take it and be gone in 10 seconds. And, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, but I saw a trial and error, you know, I started doing that. And that's how it kind of got started. Hi, welcome to the Los Livos Wine Merchant and Cafe, where you not only get to taste California Central Coast wines, but you also get to meet their winemakers. Today, I have the honor of interviewing Jeff Fisher of Habit Wines from right here in Los Livos. If that name sounds a little slightly familiar to you, this is the Jeff Fisher from the actual character of American Dad. Uh, yes, yes. So that's Crazy. an interesting path. Does he actually ever get to make wine like there has as been, in the character there, in the show? There has been in a few little references to it in the oh, show. Yeah? There's, um, yes, uh, we, I was on an episode, I forget which one, where I'm actually making wine in clay amphora. It's very subtle and I don't think you would catch it right away, but that I'm stirring wine in a in clay. Um, there's That's been fun. some habit snuck in some various uh, episodes and yeah, so it gets in there a little bit. But oh, fun. Yeah, so it's good. Well, I'm going to ask you to start off with the same question that I like to ask all of our local winemakers. Um, if you can sum up an aspect of your personality, which now everyone kind of may have an idea of what that's like <laughs> um, into one word an aspect of your personality that gets infused into habit wines what would that be hmm um, could be like one I, would, I would have to say energy you know I think I a certain amount of energy I just have of, in my personality I think that it ends up hopefully in the bottle I want the wines to be vibrant and energetic and I feel like that's maybe what I would say. You know, it's more of a creative energy. You know, it's uh, not so much just like you know, uh, bouncing off the walls type of energy. But there's a, cr a creativity, I think, energy that uh, that I that I kind of live my life by. That I feel like ends up in in the wines for sure. When I was doing some research on you and habit wines, it seems like. Um, you almost have two different Jeff Fishers. You know, you have yeah, you know, the character, the one that you know has to be out there in front of people. And but this seemed serious. Like when I go to your website, it has it has a little bit of edgy to it, but it's it's definitely seems like it's serious. Would you say this is like your passion, your calling, or like how do you divide yourself between two very demanding um, area <laughs> uh, fields? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I definitely feel like they're both uh, very creative. Mm -hmm whether it's winemaking or acting, and I feel like, you know, I look at them both as an artistic endeavor rather than look at it as a business either. I mean, obviously both of them are really intense businesses and they're a lot of demanding things to each, but I like to kind of look at both of them as art. Mm -hmm. And so whether I, I'm acting in LA or I'm up here making wine, they're, they're very different, but there's so many similarities and and so it's, I, yeah, it's, it, well, this, this is, brings a lot of balance to my life mm -hmm. and things that I don't get from helps, acting. Helps keep you grounded. It does. <laughs> you know, I think I was pretty going kind of insane for a while with just a, acting, just doing that, you know, cause you never know when you're going to get another job, you know, mm -hmm. you, so it's like you always, you always, you're auditioning, but like, you don't know if anybody's ever going to hire you. You know, and I had other jobs over the years while I was struggling as an actor for a long, long time, and and I just kind of started this as a as something as a as a passion project, you know, mm -hmm. for sure. And I never thought it would grow into what it was, but I knew that it was keeping me healthy and sane. Mm -hmm. And you know, I love being up in the valley and being around, you know, su such great people that are up here, mm -hmm. and and it's just a very different vibe, right? So. Mentally, it's been incredible to be able to make wine and a lot and, less traffic. Yes, <laughs> yes, for sure. Well, I was, uh, you know, like most actors, waiting tables for a long, long, long time. And uh, I was my last job, you know, was at this really beautiful French restaurant in LA. And we would drink a lot of Burgundy, a lot of Bordeaux, a lot of Italian wines. And you know, I was really got the wine bug again. And I never didn't have it. I drank tons of wine in college, you know, I was always drinking wine since I was a kid. And I thought, oh, I'll go sell wine. That'll be my gig now. Like, I'll do that while I'm acting. Like, I was over waiting tables, you know, I'd done it for so long. And 
And I saw these wine reps come in all the time and I would talk to them and I'd say, hey, can I, do you think I can get a job? And then finally one guy offered me a job and he was like, well, you got to quit acting because, you know, these wine sales jobs are during the day. You know, you can't go sell wine at night. And I was like, oh, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so then I thought, well, what can I do in the wine business like that I can do like on a part time basis? And I, I'd been coming up here in the valley since 1990 mm -hmm. and I kind of go to these wine festivals right and I would talk to guys that were growing grapes and finally I just started calling people and I say hey can I get some fruit I want to you know make some wine in my garage and you know a million people starts, hung up yeah. on me <laughs> and then one guy just called you know he's like yeah man I, I give you how much you want and I said 250 pounds and he laughed and he was like look I dropped that in a day if you want to come up and pick it you can have it so I drove up in my car I picked it bungee corded it in the back of my truck <laughs> drove down to LA That's you know great. we handy stemmed it all and made you know, we'd make a few cases of wine, you know, every year. I did like seven to ten cases. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of kept doing that. I was working with a, there was a winemaker in the Camarillo area. He taught some classes down in L.A. And mm -hmm. I was like trying to learn. And, and that's kind of how it started, you know, mm -hmm. literally being a garage I guess. You know. And, uh, <laughs> you know, but I saw a trial and error, you know, I started doing that. And that's how it kind of got started. But I didn't really think I would be able to get to this level. Mm -hmm. I got lucky. I mean, I... Um, to, to start habit, you know, a friend of it mine takes, was... It takes money to make money. <laughs> well, it, I didn't have any much. and uh, But a friend of mine, you know, really was... Uh, she was married to this rock star in L.A. It's a crazy story. And they got divorced. And she's mm -hmm. like, I got to get out of L.A. And she moved up to the valley. <laughs> and she introduced me to a couple winemakers. And one of them was Doug Marjoram. And, mm -hmm. you know, I got to know him a little bit. And one day I called him up and said, hey, Doug, you know... If I work for you for free for a year, you know, you think you'd be able to give me some space. I want to make, uh, you know, three barrels of red wine. And he was like, yep, come on up. And he was kind enough to let me come up and work for him. Seems and like Santa Barbara County is so open to like these like maverick ideas of, you know, it's like if you want to make wine, if you want to start off as a winemaker, come here because everybody just opens their doors. I mean, I hear these kind of stories over yeah. and over. They share their information. Totally. And there's no, you know, there's no closed doors. Anyone who's like, ah, we, we have secrets. We can't tell you, you know, it's all just. That's right. It's a great, great vibe. And so he was kind enough to, uh, to give me a start and help me out. And he was really invaluable and taught me a ton. And, and that's so, great. yeah, that's how I got started, you know, with nothing, you know, I made three barrels of red in 08. I made three barrels of red in 09. I was only going to make red how wine. How many period. do you, we have, uh, we're going to be featuring this month your, Grenache Rosé, uh, is this the Gruner Veltlinger? Yep. That's that's a fun, always a fun one for me to say. Gruner Veltlinger. Perfect. Thank you. Worked hard on that one. Um, and the Cabernet Franc. Um, so how many cases do you have of each of these? What have you grown into to now? You know, I think total production in a good year is 3,000 cases. And okay. I make about eight different wines. I was only going to make one red wine. from different vineyards? Ten different ten, vineyards ten about. Ten different vineyards, okay. And do you blend? Grapes from different vineyards, or is like one wine from one vineyard? So I only do everything single vineyard except for one wine, which is a Bordeaux blend that I do, which is you know four different vineyards and uh, four or five different vineyards usually, five different grapes to make one wine. And that's a that was the first wine I started making. Other, everything else has become a, a single vineyard, and from a specific vineyard that I really want to work with, with a specific varietal. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, one day I just woke up and I said, wow, I'm doing all these single vineyard wines. I wasn't really right, ever planning on that. And your wines are beautiful. They sell really well here. Well, thank you. Thanks. Happy, happy to carry them. I'm happy to have them here. Really, yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Great. Well, yeah. thank you for uh, sharing your stories and being part of our featured wines.